What's the difference between scar tissue and adhesions? I love this question because they're made of the same thing, yet both form differently and act a little bit differently in the body, yet both of them also negatively impact flow. So let's dive into this a little bit to really understand the difference. What happens when we have an injury? Let's say we have a tear in the ankle or a surgery where you actually have a cut. Those are an in the moment thing that happens. If we allow our traditional method of dealing with this to take place, which is the rice method, rest, ice, compression, elevation, then what we're doing is we're literally stopping that inflammation that's getting sent to repair. Fascia is made up of primarily two things, collagen and elastin. The elastin allows movement. The collagen keeps my body from turning into a puddle. There needs to be the right balance of the two for both to happen. So what happens now, we've got this gap because we've had an injury or a surgery. All of the collagen and the surrounding tissue, it starts getting dumped in to this space and it creates a scar. So collagen, when it doesn't have the elastin balance, it's like concrete building blocks one on another. There's no movement. There's no blood flow. It's a barrier to flow. So that's what happens with scar tissue. If we actually deal with scar tissue in the way that we teach, what we do is we support the inflammation. We don't want to be icing. We don't want to be limiting movement. Of course, we have to be realistic with what kind of an injury we're talking about. If you break your femur, you've got to do what you got to do. You go to the hospital, you get it set and all of those things. However, how we handle the injury will have a very dramatic impact on how we heal. Let's just say it's a first or second degree ankle sprain. You can still move that ankle around a little bit and that's good because as long as your breath allows, we wanna keep mobility as good as it can be, but we also wanna make sure that we pull away the damage because like a car accident, when you have an injury, a hit, there's debris. So same thing when you have an injury in your foot or wherever, there's going to be debris that if we don't pull it out of the way, it's gonna get in the way. And it's going to be able to, it's going to be blocking the ability for the blood to get those healing proteins and that oxygen to actually rebuild the tissue. Think about baking a cake. If you have flour, sugar, eggs, oil, you mix it up, you have batter. If you put batter in the freezer, you have frozen batter. If you put batter in the oven, you bake cake. We need to put heat and energy into the system in order for the body to rebuild and repair what was damaged. And if we do that, the body is incredibly efficient at repairing way faster than if we ice and we immobilize. So let's just imagine like you fractured your hand. If you go and you get a cast put on your hand, you might be immobilized for four weeks, six weeks, depending on the amount of uh, injury. Now, if you don't use that side, not only are we impacting what's going on here, we're also compensating because now we're not using this side of our body. So we're having to work our body in a very different way than what we normally would. And that's going to create adhesions, which we're going to get to in a moment. Also, if three days, I believe it was in three days of immobilization, we atrophy 60%. Think about that. Atrophy means the muscle shrinks it from, from lack of use. So in three days, if it atrophies 60%, I learned that in exercise physiology when I was in university. That's a crazy amount of weakening over a very short period of time. So now if you're in that for weeks on end and then compensating by time you get out of that thing and hopefully they set those bones properly, now you have a whole journey ahead of you to deal with the damage that was done from that process. Again, I'm just sharing because of course, if you have an injury, if you're not in our community and you're hearing this for the first time, you don't just change what you're doing, but there's a different way we can look at the body and how to heal. So adhesions now. We talk a lot about adhesions and basically adhesions are made of collagen as well. So now we've got this balance of collagen and elastin. Let's say we're perfectly aligned and there's a good balance and we've got full mobility, full structure, everything's working properly, but now we start falling out of alignment. Falling out of alignment can happen from that injury because now we have scar tissue and that's going to be pulling the body in a negative direction. So as we don't have optimal flow, because as soon as we fall out of alignment, that impacts the breath. So now we've got this muscle, the diaphragm, that when working properly, it's like turning on the body's furnace. But if we fall out of alignment and we're not able to breathe this way, we're breathing up here now instead, our body's colder in general. And the coldness comes largely from the development of adhesions. So if I start falling out of balance, what happens is the collagen migrates. It migrates from where it is to assist the body to not tip over. They're, they're building blocks. So if I'm sitting like this all the time, I'm going to get a migration of collagen over here. 
so that I don't keep falling forward. This is going to create like scar tissue blocks to flow. Over time, as these blocks continue, we can have adhesions riddled throughout the layers of fascia. So living in Winnipeg here, and I live above a river, I see the river freeze and thaw, freeze and thaw every season. So it doesn't go from being fluid to being ice. There's a journey and a process of it going from being nice and warm in the summer to getting colder and colder. Eventually flow starts to slow until it's basically ice. There's still flow, but for the most part, depending on how cold it is, there's going to be a nice sheet of ice on that surface. So somewhere along the way, these adhesions start getting riddled throughout your tissue and slow flow. I always say that backward flow slows. So as flow slows, more adhesions come in. So we get caught in this exponential perfect storm where once we start tipping from balance, gravity continues to grip us and take us further out of alignment because gravity loves density. So whether scar tissue or, or adhesions, we're dealing with collagen, but the reality is, is we can undo what time has done, even if it's an injury, because scar tissue that has formed from an injury or surgery where it's just been dumped in, it's still pieces of collagen that have basically fused together, but we can undo them understanding magnetics. When we have magnets far enough apart, they don't have any attraction to each other, bring them close enough together, they seal with the force. If you try to pull magnets away from each other, pretty hard to do, but you can slide them away. So when we are doing fascia decompression with our blocks, what we do is we move in through the layers and then we teach you to move in rotational directions to shear through those layers so that you can put that space back in that time has taken away and pump that blood and oxygen in through proper training of diaphragmatic breathing. And then we also teach you how to own proper alignment so that we don't just continue to fall back into those negative spaces that created the issue in the first place. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about scar tissue and adhesion, we recently did a podcast as well as a blog with a deeper dive into the subject so that you can learn more.